Greetings! Hello everybody, welcome to Tokyo. I'm at home inside my apartment. That there's a green screen. I do do some green screen work for other video clients. But today, we're gonna be discussing washi paper. I went to Coach Prefecture recently to go there, not just to follow along the Shimanto River, which is one of the most, which is the cleanest river in Japan, a very natural area, but I went there to make washi paper. One of the reasons why I want to do this is because uh, uh, this is a live stream for everybody who's watching, by the way, you might be watching live or in the playback. Um, this is my washi paper lantern. Do you see this? It is falling apart. I had this for 20 years since the time I moved into Japan. Look at that. That's awful. I, I bought this. Um, so washi paper does hold up quite well, but I bought this 20 years ago and it's a reminder of the first period of, of my time here in Japan. You can see if if you look really closely, some of the some of the grains from the from the process, it, it it it's the texture of it that makes it so unique, washi paper, and it's something that's that's best done out in the countryside. You can't do it in Japan because you need to be surrounded by the natural world. Or sorry, by in Tokyo, and um, Kochi is the best place to do that. Now I went there, and if you've seen the video, which this video is linked directly with. Just go up here on the top, a link will just pop up. You can go and see the documentary of the process of washi paper being made. Highly recommend it. I have here, before, before we go there, we're going to talk to our Discord server, um, our patrons on there, um, about uh, doing a question and answer about the process of making washi paper. They sent me, I've already opened it, but they've sent me the washi paper that I made uh, a month ago. It took about two weeks to get here. And here it is, unboxed in newspaper on a piece of cardboard. It's it's different than what, it's better than what it looked like. You see it? This is better than what it looked like when I, I'd seen it at the studio, when I was making it. It's actually extraordinarily better. Um, it's maybe, I, I, I think my image was this way, yeah. Maybe it was the other way. I don't know. It's hard to know which one is the right way up. It just depends on, on who's doing it. Um, the leaf, I, I believe they're maple leaves. They're not what you think they are. Don't don't get the wrong idea. These are things found outside of uh, Rog Rogier's, Rogier's um, um, house, his studio, including some of these pink flowers. I tried to add color into it, but you can see the, the grains of the washi paper have kind of dulled it, made it l look more earthy. I like that, you know? There's some pine needles. I, I put some seeds that I found in there. And it's all been like encapsulated inside the paper. I love this. Now the paper is two sides and I don't think you got to see both sides of it. This is washi paper. This is this, the main side. This is the side um, that we started with that had the most grains on it. And then this is the other side. So you can see very clearly, it's extremely thin, and it's just that organic matter that that shows on there. And you, I love the edges of this. Do you see the edges? You can see the fibers on it. It's really, really nice. And this is this um, texture here is the filter that was underneath it. So the kind of filter that the artist or the washi paper creator makes is pretty important. Um, to the back side of it. And the front side, you don't really see too much of the texture from the filter, but on the back side, you do. And when I make the paper lantern, it's gonna be round like this. A little bit of glue, he told me. And then the light, the LED light, should bring out some of the colors on this. It's gonna be really beautiful. Um, it's, I think, you know, when you're making washi paper, you really want to get as creative as possible and not hold back too much. You want to go a little bit further because inside, encapsulated in this, is a universe of, of Kochi. It, 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 it'll always make me, remind me of Kochi Prefecture. Um, so I'm going to say goodbye to this light and I'm going to be making a new one with LED lights. And it's important for you to realize, to um, take note of this. Don't want to use regular um, uh, what do you call those? The light bulbs that generate a lot of heat. Um, incandescent light bulbs. You want to use LEDs because they don't produce a lot of heat. Um, 
So let, let's go in and talk and show you the process. Now, if you want to see this, you can go and go into um, the YouTube. I just uploaded this video right here. I highly recommend it because, yeah, that's kind of the purpose of this video. So I highly recommend this and to show you the process here. Uh, I'm going to go over this video with you. Now, the Shimanto River is in Kochi Prefecture. Kochi Prefecture is on Shikoku Island. It's about, I don't know, like, I, I, to, to get there, I think it took about 90 minutes, to 75 to 90 minutes to fly there. So it, it's about an hour and a half. And then uh, from the airport, you can, you can just rent a car. And if you do have an international driver's license, you don't have to worry about... Uh, you shouldn't be fearful. If you drive in the United States or in any other country regularly, it shouldn't be any problem to jump in a car in Kochi. It's just on the other side of the road for the for people driving in the United States. But the roads are not crowded. And I had to say this point in the video, and somebody knocked me on it and says, how dare you compare a crowded urban area to the countryside? Well, how not a lot of people were in a car, so you have to see it from a different point of view. And that's the point of view that I I, I saw it when I was making this video. So I rented a car, there's a Toyota Mark X. Hey Gretchen, nice to see you. By the way, Gretchen, we have in our Discord server, monster uh, em emoji. And I think, I think one of the moderators might have made it, made it for you. Uh, I'm gonna go into the, to the uh, Discord server a little bit later on in a couple of minutes and take some questions from our samurai backers. But I wanna go, go through this video a little bit um, this one is, it took me a little bit of time to make. It wasn't an easy vis video to make uh, because there are so many elements to it. And the biggest problem with this video, it's it's that it, it's all over the place. And that was something that worried me when I, I uploaded it. There was no real central theme. And to make the river the theme is a little bit slow, but it's still beautiful. But it was hard. It was a hard video for me to to, to swallow because I, I wanted something more central as the theme. This, this is, is the longest river in Shikoku and the cleanest in Japan. It's the last of its kind. Which do you see the color special. of the river in this episode, behind we're me? Be looking at some of the activities that you can do here. But first, let's see this river from the air. It's this in the spring before the mountain. It's this amazing emerald green, and I saw this. From, from the origin all the way up from the mountains where this river starts, all the way down to the Pacific in a, a town called Nakamura, um, which is near the base of, of where, Fuji, where Shimanto spills into the Pacific Ocean. And it just always had this beautiful color. Now the Shimanto River, where a lot of washi paper is made in Japan in, around this area, is the last major river in Japan not to be dammed. Not in a, you know, like, in a bad way, damned, but in a way, I, I, I only say that because I know that there's, tr there's trolls in there that are going to say something, but it's in a way that, that it, 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 you know, dams make lakes and create, you know, large water areas, but they, it also stagnates the water a little bit, and then it gets polluted, and then people build houses around it, and this is nothing like that. This is from the source all the way down the river, free, free flowing. And the reason why this is important for washi paper is because this is the amount of, of love and respect that people have for this river. They don't want to dam it up because they don't want to ruin the connection with nature. And they think that that's what will happen if they do make a dam. The second reason they don't make a dam is because there's just not a lot of people there and the population's low. But the low population that is there is very protective of the nature, which makes the washi paper very good there. So. Um, I, I, it was really important to show as much of no melts. The water show melts. show you as much of Coach Prefecture's Shimanto River to set up the washi paper episode. Now there wasn't enough material just to make a dedicated washi paper episode, so I had to split it with the river. And I, I made this video with with help from Coach Prefecture, um, so I also wanted to promote um, some of their areas because a lot of people have not been to Coach Prefecture. A lot of people have not been down to Shikoku. It's one of the, probably the least visited of the three main islands, which is a shame because you're missing out on places like this. The downside is that it takes a little bit of time to get there. It's not easily reached by train because there's no Shinkansen line going into um, uh, Shikoku Island and there's no, and Coach Prefecture is the furthest. It's definitely easiest uh, to be reached by plane by plane 
Um, I, I want to get into this town here before we get into... Uh, uh, there's, two, uh, there's two things I wanted to show you here really quickly. And then we, we, if you have some questions, I will take it in the Q&A on the Discord server. This is what's called a chinkabashi, or sinking bridge, and it's only in Kochi. And they've made it so that it can be submersed. When the waters are higher, it can flow over it. And that's the purpose of the bridge. So they don't have to keep rebuilding the bridges. It is as it is. It's very strong. And it, in, the, in the spring, when the water's down, in the winter, then you can have people will cross it. In the, in the flooding season, then people don't cross this. If you do rent a bicycle, beware that it gets windy on this canal where the Chinkabashi is. And there was an incident where somebody was blown into the river recently. And I put the disclaimer because Coach Prefecture, and one of the reasons why the video was slightly delayed, Coach Prefecture told me about the incident. And we just wanted to make sure that there was some information that um, that tourists wouldn't, uh, you know, try to be cowboys and ride across at, in, during high winds. It's kind of obvious. I told them that adults kind of know not to do it, but there's always going to be an idiot out there. Um, there's not much you can do about it except build walls around it, but they're never going to do that because it's a like a cultural heritage part of their the prefecture's history. All right. The next part of this video that I want to show you before we go to the Discord server is the wash is um, Yusuhara. This is the city in the mountains. It's a little bit away from the Shimanto River, but it's uh, it's a, it's like a must stop place if you go to Kochi. It's, you have to go through this town. Now this, this road that I go through, it used to be really narrow and it had these massive um, like 30 foot, I don't know, 10 meter poles going on along the side of it, metal poles. And the reason for this, the metal like steel poles was so that the trucks with lumber on it, the logs wouldn't spill into the houses that were built along it. And I talked with a lot of people in the area and they told me that it took decades before um, Yusuhara got permission to relocate the landowners. The biggest problem in Japan with progress um, is relocating the landowners so that they can build in certain areas because you know the property has been owned for centuries and centuries by families passed down from one to the next. Nobody wants to give up their rights, but Yusuhara um, residents eventually gave in and did that. And what it created was a beautiful city that is attracting more tourists. I was surprised at the number of tourists that were out here in the middle of nowhere. So it's something that I think a place, if, especially if you love architecture, that you wanna go and visit. All right, now, this is the washi paper making scene and uh, where I can talk about it a little bit more. Oh, and this, this library was also a live stream, if you remember. So I got some nice um, HD footage in there for you. All right, this is Kami Koya. Kami Koya is a studio made by a Dutchman who came to um, came here to make paper 30 year, oh, 30 plus years ago. And he told me he was interested in book binding. This was a European way of, uh, European skill, he said. And he came here and just fell in love with that connection with nature and the paper, the quality of the paper. Here he is right here, Roger, uh, Ragier. I, I don't pronounce it right. I'm, I, I think he's such a nice guy. I, I probably will forgive me, but, um, uh, he fell in love with the area and the result was that he was able to take this is why a little bit of diversity is so good for japan and you can see it on display here he took some of his he took his western thinking because he's a western guy and he he, he integrated it or fused it with the traditional japanese way and as an immigrant or as as somebody who's coming to japan from somewhere else you really, I think it, we both had this feeling like we really want to protect Japan's um, culture. We're not here to ruin it. If anything, we can try to enhance it or help to um, uh, teach it to other people. Some of the best people that are teaching Japanese culture are not Japanese. They're actually outsiders who have been living here, who have a great affinity for the country and love for it. Um, his love is for for the, his area and, and the paper. And he took his skills from Europe and, and what he's learned throughout his life and he was able to find creative ways to make his paper different. 
He innovated in an industry that hasn't changed in centuries. And uh, I thought that that was, that actually should have been the story, but we just didn't have enough time to focus on, on uh, his activities and I didn't have enough time to come back, so I produced what I produced. But this is another episode I can see of his creativity and how he makes his um, top quality paper. I made a paper lantern. I would like to just spend a week watching him make some of the, the, the highest quality washi paper um, so thick that you can make handbags out of them, so high quality that people pay hundreds of dollars per square meter or more, all, all from materials that is grown in the wild. It's just, to me, it's mind-blowing because I grew up with, we all did, with like the white reams of paper, right? This is not what this is. This is where a chef, and this is washi paper to me. This is where you can compare it to food. A chef has, has created a, a course or a meal for you. A paper chef has created this specially for you. That's how I feel with washi paper. Um, if you're a client of a washi paper artist or master, then you, you tell them what you want and they will use their skills and artistry to make something like this, whether it's through texture or through organic material. It's really quite amazing to me. The more I got into it, the more and the more I talked to people that are fascinated by washi paper, the more I started getting fascinated by washi paper, the more I wanted to do it. And I'm really glad that I got a chance to start an, an introductory course. And now I'm kind of ready maybe to go back and, and take this to another level. Maybe. Because I, I would love to learn more. Um, it really is a craft. You can see the thickness of this paper and how hard this is. Think about the process, if you watch the video, to make this one sheet of paper that I just showed you. This is one continuous sheet that's been rolled, made by hand. I wanna just, how much time this probably took to make and how many people were pouring the pulp onto a filter like that. It's just extraordinary, especially how thick it is and how you can see the little pieces of seeds in here. That's all, I believe, made just like this. So uh, you wouldn't want to cut this paper unless you were, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to, to see. I see. I see this all as one big piece of artistry. So I don't I, I think when you watch the process being made, you have a new respect for it. Yeah, it does feel like fil felt a little bit. Um, that's from Isken... It's, sorry, I butchered that one. But it, it does feel, it's softer, but it's also rough too. It's not quite like felt. Um, it is rough, like paper. It's hard. It's, it's a texture, but on the sides, you can feel the, te the fibers in it. Um, so yeah, for me, after doing it and making it, it's more than just paper. It's, it's washy. It's art. It's something special. And you can write on it but you can also make a light out of it. You can also make like handbags out of it. So there's a lot of things that you can do and you can make paper la lanterns out of it, lights. And that's what I'm gonna be making with the one that, that uh, I have in my living room right now. Um, it's really beautiful and the textures and the colors, you can try to um, use a um, green material, you can try to use brown material. And I was told that that organic material inside stays locked in there for, for Decades. It shouldn't ha be any problem at all once it's been covered with the, the fibers. This is the raw material that all washi is made. This, these are the branches from the area in Japan that he will harvest, um, not just in front of his house, although he has some, in places where he's cultivating them. And he, he's got tons and tons and tons and tons of this stuff harvested at a certain time. And these will be steamed. If for bigger projects, they have bigger steamers for hours to make them soft and, and pliable. And then after these are steamed, he will peel them to get them into um, very natural and thin slices. And then they're dried and then reconstituted with water in, in or just added water where you, where you can start to pull the fibers away. But it's, it's such an art. And it's amazing to me that centuries ago, they came up with this I mean, it's like inventing the wheel, inventing paper. Instead of writing on a leaf, 
you can write on something that you would make from from um, nature and the, the amount of steps and scientific innovation that came from this like it's just mind blowing considering what they had centuries ago so th this is the raw ingredients and this is where he steams it he puts the um, branches here after they've been harvested and steams them and makes them soft that, that that's the cover for it and then the end result um, after a few hours and peeling and then drying is this this is dried and this is the base of all washi paper these dried um, branch peelings this is and this was extraordinary to me I asked him first of all how much is this he said so this is one kilogram of it, it looks like a lot more this is one kilogram of, of uh, the dried branches and the, the thing is, like, this took a lot of work to make, and this isn't going to make a lot of paper, all right? So it's, it's sort of a process that you can't make a lot of it, and if you try to make a lot of it, it's almost destructive to the forest and nature. But if you make it, if you keep it special and you see the value of washi paper, then it pays off to be a washi paper maker, but it's hard to do it because if it's a volume game, this is really hard to do. It's really, really hard to do. Um, and, and he said it's about $30 for one piece of washi paper, which is crazy. But I, w when you think about paper, like this, this white piece of paper, I can't imagine one piece being $30, but you have to think of it in a different way. You have to change your perception of what paper is. I think that's what, uh, what happened when I went here. This is what it looks like after it's been steamed and sort of moistened again. You can see the fibers in it. This is all in the video with the, the link that I showed you before. You can click the I in the video if you're watching in the playback to go and see this video, which is about halfway through the, the river adventure. Um, I didn't know about any of this process, especially, I knew kind of about the filter, but the banging of, of the steamed um, branches here was new to me. And the way he does it, In this rhythm was fascinating to me and after a while it's almost like you're banging a drum and when you get used to the to the motion it, it can be kind of fun in a way but it's work it's not easy you have to be consistent and hit it in the right place it's a skill it really is a skill and after a while you can see the fibers getting longer and then it's it's starting to separate and and then put into water like this right just I narrated. I, I don't have to say anything. This becomes the washi paper pulp. That's the pulp. And this is, this, this, I thought pulp, pulp was going to be really thick and oozy and gooey. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. And most of this is just water. And it's what's going to be left over that's good, that becomes the paper that is the most important. Next, we go outside to look for natural ingredients. To all right. Typically, I think we would go off of the reservation. We are just, his house is right here. So it's, it's we only went about 100 meters away. So it wasn't a deep forest rummage to look for stuff. We just found stuff that was along the road. There's some dandelions, there's some ferns, there's some little maple trees here. There's some dogwood, dogwood trees. And uh, we took what we could, what I could find in about five minutes because we were losing the daylight and I really wanted to film this episode. So I'm like, let's just go, let's just go and do it. And uh, we went back in. When we got back in there, he showed me a step that um, I didn't see before. This slime, and I don't even know what the technical name for it. This slime is, is, is like one of these catalysts or key ingredients to making the washi paper because um, the slime is mixed in with the watery pulp and this the slime makes it run smoothly. So then if you just put it with the water, the pulp will not go anywhere. It just, psh, it go, the water goes through the filter and then the pulp stays where it is. With the slime, you can see that the water just smooths and oozes over the filter and then sinks in. You, that's why you need the slime. You need the slime to be more um, oozy. <laughs> you need it to ooze over the filter and then settle in. 
and that's what you get an even balanced washi paper. Without this slime, it just sinks in and then it's very, you can't work with it. The slime is, is, is key. And this comes from an okra root, okra being that vegetable, um, slimy vegetable here in Japan. And after he's, he's put it into the, um, in, into this bag and smashed it up, you get all this natural slime. And when you hold the piece of washi paper, this slime was probably, you know, part of it, sort of. I mean, it's not slimy, the paper, but it, it, it's slime. And, it's ed and he kept on saying, it's edible. I'm like, yeah, I'm not eating this. It's slime. It's actually really gooey. It didn't smell wonderful, <laughs> but it's a key ingredient. Serious. And you can see here how the, it flows. Do you see? It doesn't flow like this over the filter if you don't have the slime. And if you look very carefully in the video, you'll see that there are, you can see the, the fibers, the grains in there. Um, a lot of it is not, most of it you can't see very well, but every now and then you'll get a long one, a long piece that is more obvious. And here's the water filtering through. And the water would just go into, in between the tables where he's made um, a funnel that would, that would filter into a bucket down there. But uh, yeah, it, it gradually went in. And at the end, we had the base in which we started to put the pattern onto it. So I started, all right, my biggest mistake was that I started putting um, all of it on there. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. I just started putting it all in. I didn't have a lot of pulp left. And he said, whoa, hold, hold your horses here. You're using all your pulp. You need to have the pulp after you put the, all of the texture, the organic material on top you need to put another layer of pulp. Don't use all your pulp. And I'm like, Argh. so I had, to, I had to borrow some of his pulp <laughs> because I was going pulp crazy. This is a pulp nonfiction, I guess you could say. The um, materials that I had, including this, um, what do you call the ones, the like dandelions or something? The, whew, and then they would blow like this. I can't believe it. I guess they're dandelions. I put, I put some of the dandelions in there so you could see the seeds that come in very finely through the layer. And I'm gonna, after, after this video, I'm gonna show you one more time the washi paper, the final product. Uh, you have to place it evenly and you don't want chunks that are too big, but just big enough that they're gonna pop out a little bit. If the chunks are too big and they pop out, then it, it, it kind of ruins the structure, the integrity of the paper. If you try to bend it, it'll just bust through. Um, but now I'm putting the final layer of pulp on top of the organic material. This was interesting. This, the, he took extra pulp and he added some kind of organic material. Maybe it was like um, clay and the black one could have been charcoal. Just things with different colors into it. And he said, take the pulp and just spread it in patterns as you would like, artistically or any way you like. So I took some of the red and the green, and you're going to be able to see it in the design. It's not an overpowering color. I like to call it more like an accent to the washi paper. But uh, this pulp, just like the other pulp, would filter through, and it would leave the natural ingredients embedded into the paper. And you'll you'll be able to see that in the final final result. Um, I had a lot of I had a lot of fun doing this too. We were we were having a lot of fun. Um, there I'm putting some red, the red accent onto it. Yeah. And there's the final, the final, when I'm done with it, this is what it looked like before I got it. Okay, this is, might be a good, good segue to get the um, piece of washi that I made before. All right, we're going to go to the Discord. So if you're a samurai daimyo, samurai support on Patreon, we're going to go to the Discord in a second. This is what the final product looks like. So it's a lot earthier. You can see there's just a hint of pink here. Looks like someone spilled some high C on there or something. There's just a hint of pink and there's a hint that this is the black pulp with some charcoal on it that I added across there. There's a little bit more pink here and I think there's a little stream of green there. You can still see the purple flowers and the colors, but it's more subdued. It's a natural looking color. And this is the natural color of the, the um, the, the bamboo, not the bamboo, but the, the uh, branches that you saw earlier before they were steamed. But it looks different here, doesn't it? This is before it's dried. When it dries and hardens, it starts to, um, the layers start to um, lose their, 
um, what's the word? You can't see through it as much. Yeah, and now he's adding some blot paper and uh, draining it. The next step after this is to get all the moisture out of it. And you can see holding it up, it's a lot more colorful. You can see all of the patterns. It's just kind of sandwiched in between there. And as it dries, it turns um, that thin layer on top of it um, takes away the color a little bit. It's pretty extraordinary. And then the, the final step is to dry it. And he puts a very small amount of glue around the, the sides of it onto a wooden board. Uh, make sure it's flat, and then puts it out in the sun to dry for about a week. Uh, more or less a week, because it has to be completely dry. And then uh, it'll be cut around there. And I, I liked it that, that uh, his cat was behind the, behind the board. There's my washi paper protecting it from, from mice. <laughs> so it's, that's why it's in really good shape. And I, 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 really, I really liked him because he has... He reminds me, I don't know, a little bit of, of, of me in a way because I really love Japan and I love the area that I live in. I love protecting and, and teaching some of the culture through the series, through the show that, that I make. And he also has that passion and has turned it into a business where you can go to Kochi and learn how to make washi paper at his studio with him. Now he's used Kengo Kuma, who's one of the most, probably the most famous Japanese architect who designed the Olympic Stadium, uses his paper uh, in designs that he's creating. If, if, he, if Kengo Kuma needs washi paper, he calls Roger to make it for him. And then he will get uh, a team together and they'll go out and in coach in a natural area, start to make the paper for this famous architect. And that gives him um, some clout to sell his paper um, more because not a lot of people are buying washi paper. So if you're in Silicon Valley, if, if you're in Silicon Valley and you're one of these Bitcoin um, tech billionaires and you're making it to a Japanese home, you better call this guy because he's the master and you can have your entire house cut out the middleman, go straight to him and he'll get he'll get you the paper that you need. How about that, huh? Man, you probably still need a designer, but um, this is where probably the best paper in Japan comes from Kochi, I believe. OG Paper, some of the big companies make their paper in Kochi because this is where they have a lot of the lumber, a lot of the logging, and uh, it's just a, a, a sustainable logging industry right now. That the paper that Japan makes is replanted and you can see there's no real, there's, there's no deforestation in that area at all. Oh, I did love these water wheels too. There's lots of little things around Kochi that take advantage of nature and they've created these amazing um, little attractions. I'm not sure the purpose of the water wheels, except for that they look really, really cool. <laughs> that's about it all right i'm going to turn to the discord server now and we're going to see some of our our um supporters hear from them let's see here hey everybody how many people do we have in here One, two three four five six, it looks like about ten ten people all right i'm still here Yes, you are, Megan. So, hey, guys, so I want to ask you if you have any questions or anything that you want to add about the video that you saw yesterday or maybe today or just right now. Anybody? <laughs> Anyone? So, were you sponsored to drive that car? Because you sure uh, sounded like an advertisement a few times in the in the video. <laughs> yeah. Um in, in a way, all right, Toyota rent a car for this episode only. Um, let me use the car for free, because I, 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 because I've been using when I rented the car in Ibaraki. I met with the PR people, and we did a business card exchange. And for this episode, they let me they let me have the Mark X for four days, uh, free of charge. Um, I don't. Know, I hope that they let me do that again because renting a car in Japan is expensive, but. Yeah, it, it might have seemed a little bit commercially. And that's that's not because they asked for it, maybe. It's just because I wanted to just show. <laughs> I just wanted to show the car out of thank, thankfulness to for them giving me uh, access to the car. That'd be great if Toyota Rent-A-Car became a sponsor, huh? 
So given what you've learned, would you take your old washi lamp and try and reconstruct it into a new washi lamp? That's, well, that's, that's really interesting. I really hadn't thought about that, but I think it's possible, isn't it? You can reconstitute the paper, um, maybe clean it, wash it, and then put it back in. I think that's possible. I'll have to ask Roger, but that might be a really great idea. This would be a way, Nosh, to, to like um, reincarnate something from the past and put it into a new design. That's kind of a cool idea because I am somewhat emotionally attached to that as we both, me and the light, have been in Japan for the same amount of time. So I, I, I want that lamp to continue its journey with me. But the only way it can do that is if it's reconstituted into another washi paper. I'll ask, I'll ask him about that. That's interesting. He actually has an exhi exhibition in Ginza coming up where he's going to be showing off his washi paper. And if that, I'll, I'll let you know in Patreon and uh, um, in some of the other social media, if you're in Tokyo at the time, you should, you should go and check it out. I think it's in uh, one of the department stores up on the, up on the top. There's going to be a gallery where his paper is going to be on. His washi paper will be on display. It's a good question. It'd be fun if you could actually do a stream from there, assuming that the department yeah. store would actually let you. Right. Yeah, I think I think we can get permission to do that. That would be really good. Um, I know he, he doesn't come to Tokyo that often. He's kind of a... I, I, I got the feeling he's kind of a country boy, and he likes being out there, and, and I would too. I was thinking, like, how much is it... What are the land prices here? I wonder if the internet's good enough to live stream, et cetera, et cetera, because it's such a nice lifestyle out there, except the spiders are pretty big. But other than that... Um, fresh water, clean air. I, I'll ask him if, see, that'd be great to do live stream and then get more in depth with his creativity there and then maybe film it for a longer Only in Japan main channel episode on just him and his washi paper and his creativity and his artistry and how that's different and the mind of a non-Japanese innovating an industry that hasn't changed for centuries. To me, that's kind of a fascinating topic and I wish I had more time to jump into it in this episode. I second the idea of you own your old lamp, and then that way you don't have to throw it away, and you can upcycle it. Yeah, I'm never throwing it away. Even if I take it off, it'll go somewhere, and then, and, and like, next year, Kanai will find it and probably yell at me to throw it away, like all my old t-shirts and stuff. I'm never throwing those away. They have a special place in my heart, and not even, what, that Marie Kondo will not be able to come into my house and, and reposition any of the stuff. No way. I have like my holy shrine of things and that washi paper is going in there until it can be reconstituted. Um, so thank you for that. I, I third that. Can you third something? I third it and I, I, I'm going to go and do it. <laughs> I'm going to do this. This is... I, so we just confirmed it sparks joy. Yeah. So I think point. you... You and I should work together to create a washi paper for that lamp. That would be fun. I have a feeling I'm going to be going back to Yusuhara anyways. I really love that town. I think that there's a lot more stories to tell. And I'm looking, I've met Ken Gokuma many times. And he's somebody that we're in, the, we're both in the same uh, organization, a nonprofit organization. So I want to see if I can get him to do an interview and introduce the stadium or the design to the channel. So then we can have a better understanding of what the Olympic Stadium is directly from the designer. Why should I narrate it when he can tell us? And I believe he speaks English, although hesitantly so. Um, he's tired. The guy is so busy. But if I can get him in the next few months to do a episode, I'm going to do that. Um, I've already started trying by, by asking him through the MPO. Um, but it would be pretty cool to get... Um, so I'll be back to... Uh, sorry, I, I brought up Kenko Kuma because he, as an architect, he's now world famous. But his fame started when he changed his style, like his super fame, when he went back to Yusuhara, which is where I showed you in the live streams and in this video. Excuse me. There is a Kabuki theater that I didn't feature in any of the episodes, I don't think. That Kabuki theater, when he saw that, it changed the way he thought. He used to use all cement in his designs. When he saw the Kabuki theater, he changed the way he imagined his architecture and started incorporating wood. This is significant because that's why you have the stadium for the world, uh, for the uh, Olympics that we have. This is why we have a lot of wood buildings today when it makes more sense to build with concrete. He's using wood 
going back to Jap Japanese aesthetic centuries ago. And it's that connection with nature that has made him world famous because that's what people were look longing for. So I would love to go back to Yusu Hada to do that episode and then to reconstitute the light. There's like five episodes out of this now, right? Because if I take that light and, and give it a second life, I'm going to make sure that everybody sees this. So that's an episode. We look forward to it. Thank you. Me too. I want to give him another life. Another life. Anyways. Yeah, thank you for you. What's that? It's dark. Bob? You for, you for Bob? So your original lamp, was it damaged or did it just work? And what is the general life span of washi paper? That's a good question. Let me go get the light. I am, I unplugged it to bring it out. Just so you can see it. Hey, Vern, you are really breaking up there. Okay, I'll try again. I was wondering if the wash, uh, the original uh, lamp was damaged or did it wear out? And then what and typically of washi paper? I don't think it wore out. It doesn't, washi paper can last for centuries, if not longer. It, there's no real... Just the life of an organic material, I believe when you add that slime in it and there's some sort of chemical reaction that just makes it last longer. And after it's been dried out, it's just everything is just, it's done. As long as it doesn't get wet or burn, the washi paper should last for centuries. This washi paper did not for maybe two reasons. One, it's kind of thinner than this, okay? This washi paper is thinner and I don't think the quality is as good. Um, because when I bought it, I didn't know anything about washi paper. I just knew that it looked Everybody cool. Everybody's still here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yeah, he, he's answering, but he's not. Yeah, I'm going to turn up, just mute that for a second. So I, I, I couldn't see the, the quality of it because when you, when you look at washi paper lights, what do you know about washi as an, as an educated consumer? I had no idea. So I didn't, didn't realize that this is really thin. Um, so I think I dropped it once or twice. And one of the reasons why I like this light was that the washi paper 20 years ago could be, it, 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 was, it was paper, like it could fold, you see this, like an accordion. And I could travel with this. So I, I'd moved in my career in Japan 17 times. So this thing went down 17 times and it came right back up. And you can see it, it, it still does that. Um, but here, I think it was just one little teeny rip and it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And, and once you have a, a, a blemish, and you can see there's the artist, I think had, had put his stamp onto the paper. It, it's just a really cool lamp. Washi paper, it takes the light. <laughs> this, this, this light's in really bad shape. Let me see if I can plug it in. It takes the light and it just diffuses it and it's beautiful. It gives you this really nice natural looking, you see? this really nice natural looking uh, glow in your room. And the, the natural fibers makes it almost like having a tree in your house. It's, it almost looks like you, you have a plant in your house. It kind of blends in really well in a natural way. I'm turning, it, turning the um, volume back up. It's a good question, Vern. I, I, I don't know what happened to her. Can I all I need to leave? Yeah. If you have any questions in the chat as well, you can go ahead um, and ask away. I'll, I'll do this for another couple of minutes. It's it's always fun. The Discord has been a lot of fun, and if you and if you want to join up to the Discord server, um, where you can chat with people from all around the world that that are connected through this show, um, there's a link. I'll put a link in the description as well, so you can join us. We're we're nearing our two thousandth member, which is was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, any other questions here? Will you revisit Shimanta River yeah, when the, the river runs high? Is this the episode? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, was this the episode where you had to go back and reshoot some? Um, yes and no. So the Shimanta River episode is... Um, the, I didn't have to reshoot anything with that. But I did another episode in Kochi, at, in Kochi City for the Sunday Market, which is one of the next videos coming in the next 10 days, I believe. Kochi's uh, City Market is the oldest in Japan. It's been going on for 390 years. The history is really long. 
So I, I, I got there, we got there and filmed on the last day, but we arrived at 11 p.m., 11 a.m. And the market, it, it goes till 6 p.m., but it kind of starts winding down at, at lunchtime because the farmers have come in at, at five in the morning. So I had to fly back in to film the setup. So I, I came the night before to film at 5 a.m. Of, of old people setting up the te their tents. And there are people in their 90s getting out of pickup trucks and setting up tents and stalls. And it blew my mind to see a 90-year-old with that kind of energy because even at 45, at half their age, I have half their energy. It's crazy. What are these people doing? How do they stay so, so vital? So I wanted to film that scene and, and was able to do that. Um, but I'll probably go back, and we got a comment in the chats here, I'll probably go back to Shimanto River. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, though, because I have a very loaded schedule of travel, including like Niigata, Hokkaido, maybe even Okinawa, back down to Kansai. Um, it's going to be pretty crazy. Um, I'm actually even going to China, going to Beijing to, to help out my friends um, with the spelling cup again um, on the Chinese side. So it's, it's, it's going to be a crazy summer crazy all right i'll take one more question you know, these are things that you're streaming as well as filming for the main channel yeah i'll be i'm always going to be i'm always going to be streaming if i go on location because i want to bring you um with me at the time it's different when you watch it some people don't like these live streams and i understand that that's why i separated the channels um you don't have to subscribe to both so when people get angry about it i'm like well why did you subscribe what do you why are you expressing your anger i didn't i can't help it the reason for these live streams is to fill in the content of the main channel and to give you a different point of view because I can't take you on the location right now. And that's just too cool to pass up and interact with you um, and, uh, and show it to you in a long format. The live streams are cool. And the reason why I'm gonna be doing it wherever I take you and probably never stopping this channel is because you can hear some of the places, you can take in some of the things that I would normally cut out like the birds chirping or maybe the sight of the ceiling inside of an auditorium. You probably would have seen um, um, like Tokyo Game Show a thousand times, but a live stream in there where you saw maybe the floor and the ceiling, you start to see bits and pieces that you wouldn't normally see. To me, that's fascinating because it's, it's another direction to see something that's very popular or something that you might have read in a guidebook. You're now seeing it from a third or fourth or fifth angle. And that's the value to me for the live streams. Um, so heck yeah, I'm taking you guys everywhere. <laughs> as long as I got a Wi-Fi signal. Well, you know, it's always a joy to join your live streams. What would you say is the best way to be notified that you're going live? That's a very good, that's a very good question, Nosh. I'm glad you brought that up because I checked on the um, analytics for a YouTube page and only 10% of our audience has, has the notifications activated. That means 90% of you that are watching um, have subscribed, but you have not clicked the notification bell. And inside of the no notification bell, YouTube makes it really complicated. They give you an option for always, sometimes, and never. And a lot of people have, uh, they change sometimes to personal. I would just go for always. And if you really don't want to miss a notification, just click the notification bell and, and put that on to always. For the main channel too, please. Definitely, because main channel, all the channels on YouTube have a problem where people are not, they're subscribing and they think they clicked the notifications and they didn't. The other way to do it would be the Discord server, which is the what when I'm talking with Nosh right now, there's a link in the description for that that's coming uh, shortly. And also on Patreon, I always put the links, like 99% of the time, I'll put a link in advance first on Patreon. And you should get a notification if you have a smartphone attached to Patreon. Um, that pops up on your smartphone. The other way is also Instagram. Um, it's another place where I'll put a link where you can click through from Instagram. If we, do we have any Instagrammers here? You can click through from Instagram to the YouTube app and then that's an easy way to go in. Um, and there's gonna be more and more um, opportunities. Facebook is one, but not as much. But uh, did, Nosh, do you have any ideas that I, how I could help people with the notifications? Um. Not off the top of my head, but we could work on something. Yeah, I I wish that there was a system that was there was just an app. There you go. There's a million dollar idea. An app that just does notifications for you, for your favorite YouTubers. That would be incredible. Just as soon as the the video goes live, the app, 
but but the app the app would have to do all the all the notifications and get them right away and then notify the people automatically like instantly better than YouTube does it. I would pay for that. I would pay a creator for somebody to do to, to do something like that. And people have asked me if I wanted to do a, de a dedicated only in Japan app, and I you know I don't. I, it's something that I might do, but that would also be another way to get notifications. The smartphone is like basically an alarm clock that notifies you of, of things. You can't do it on the computer anymore. But when it comes to live streaming, the reason why I do not give uh, advance notice in the live streams is that because most of the people, um, they, they'll click it and then they'll say, ah, it's not right now. And then they go away and they never come back. And the live streams also that have been scheduled have done poorly, worse than the ones that were scheduled, uh, that weren't scheduled, believe it or not. So I just, I give usually about a 30 minute to one hour notice. And the reason why, uh, it might even be less, is because they're spontaneous. It's something that you should, you should feel like you caught it, you know? It's a lucky thing, it's something special. And I want, I want to give that feeling when you do watch a live stream, like, yeah, I caught one. But if it's scheduled so far in advance, life is scheduled too much. There has to be some spontaneity to it. And I know that people might miss it, but there's a really good feeling when you don't. Yeah. Just like when I see space boat on the Sumida River, I get really excited. I scream. But if the space boat was scheduled and I knew the schedule and I, I was going out there just to watch it, it wouldn't be as exciting. It's just something that you just catch, you know, space boat. One of the things you can do, John, is uh, with the um, Discord is uh, you can tell Discord to do an at everyone notification since you're an admin. Okay. And say, hey, I'm going to be live streaming in half an hour. So anybody who happens to be paying attention to Discord will then uh, know that it's about to happen. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I, I think that's a great idea. Um, Discord, it, it, I'm still kind of new to it. It takes me several months before I get used to anything, like marriage. But uh, Discord is a tool. It's a platform that we can use to do a lot of really great things. And I know it's a th if for some people who might not have signed up, I know like it's something that gamers use to communicate with one another when they're gaming. But it's got so many other values, I think. And I can see this as such a tool. Just the communication, just the audio that you can hear. Um, is is so much clearer than normal telephone, and I think that might be because we got some nitro boosts. <laughs> Just so we got some nitro boosts from some backers, but we have a really um, great chance to to use this Discord server to do some really great things. I think, and one of the things that it can do is notifications, um, and have twenty four hour access to ask questions and um, get response from people that are also watching the series and the show. I think if if I ever arc archive the show, this is the best place to do it. Just everyone who's watched the show, hundreds of people will know which episode you might be looking for. So the archive is, is like human, yeah, has a human touch to it, um, which is cool. Like if I need, if I can't, can't remember something, I can just go to Discord and say, hey guys, you guys remember this? When was that? I bet you somebody knows the answer. There's a lot of people who know a lot of answers in this Discord server, I'm telling you. If we get more people, there'll be even more, more know-it-alls in there. Yeah. All right. Um, oh boy, we're running about an hour. Any other questions? I, I I'm I'm always hesitant to say goodbye. I'm one of these people that will stand there until you're until you leave. Um, where do you do the voice notifications? Generally, um, there's nobody in voice chat rooms to hear them. If you're talking Discord, um, I'm not sure that was directed at me. What did you I miss? I was just asking a question of a person who suggested doing voice notifications. Okay. Yeah, the voice the voice notifications. Uh, Nosh just told me there's a way to do that. Just just how uh, Katayama said by notifying everybody that I'm in in the voice notifications, and I can do that now by doing um, like at everybody. I think it was at at. I'll learn. I know that there's some some skills that I need to do. Like washi wow, paper was really m very much like Discord. You just have to do it a hundred times before it becomes really natural. Um, so there's, there's ways to notify. And if you're a samurai, if you're a Patreon supporter, um, I'm using this as a way to get ideas through the general chat, which is open to everybody. If you're a Patreon supporter on the samurai, I'm using it also as a chance to get small groups where I can talk to 
um, only in Japan supporters and, and get ideas as well. So more and more I'm going to be doing live streams like this where you guys in the Samurai uh, chat room have a chance to um, talk on the air or just listen and from a different point of view. You have the ability to talk. Like anyone could right now just scream something out and they would be part of the history of the show. And I can't do anything to stop it. Obviously, Solaris is not in the chat Only group. In <laughs> I knew, Ma I knew Ma UFO Bob was going to say something. If Solaris was here, he totally would have ye yelled something out. I, ge I get the feeling. Probably Disney-related. Uh, we love him. But the uh, the Discord server has a huge... Positive it, it, there's a link in the description. Definitely go and do that. And um, if you're a samurai backer, you'll, you'll have a chance to be a part of this community on the Discord server. It's different and smaller. It has a more friendlier feel, I think, to it. And, uh, yeah, it's one of the things that you can be. And the Postcard Club, if you want to join the Postcard Club. Everybody who's in Patreon after the Samurai level has access to this. Cool. And Nosh just put the link in the description so you get to go um, straight into there. Um, for Gretchen, who is our big super chatter of the day, I will show you, Gretchen, that they do... <laughs> I, look, I, I know, and you know, I don't drink Monster. And Gretchen is the one who always tells us to drink Monster, but we have these um, custom emojis on here. Do you see that? And uh, our our wonderful um, moderators have made these original emojis. Kevin Riley's in there. Kevin's in the house. Kuma's kitchen. You can see there's Karate Kid. Uh, Peter's got two, I believe. Um, Okapi's in here. Peter's got two. Kanai doesn't have one yet. I'm trying to get Kanai to make one for her, but you have access to these. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty. It's a pretty cool platform. All you gotta do is join, join us in there. I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, oh, and by the way, um, yeah, I think. Do do Japanese automated industry? Yeah, there's a ton of stuff that I'm going to be doing um, in the fall and the winter. I think I'm going to be doing more stuff with cars in the fall. I'm going to be driving through um, more of the countryside, um, so there's going to be more cars. And I got a, another driving episode that's coming up, a rented car episode. So there's a lot of car stuff. It just took me a year before I had confidence to to drive around in public, <laughs> but now we're starting to make a lot of really fun. Uh, car episodes and um, need to get Kanai's permission to one shot in the doghouse. Yeah, I think she'd be. I think she'd be okay with anything. I I I kind of put a couple of images that might have been semi-approved by her in in the Dropbox. If 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 somebody does want to make emojis, or uh, just let me know. I will give you a, a link to a Dropbox with a bunch of photos in high res, higher res. And we can do that because I think that would be funny. Um, and she's she's more and more in, in the live stream, so that would, that would be pretty cool. Um, uh, that would actually get me out of the doghouse. I'm going to save that card. So if I ever get in the doghouse, I'm going to like, hey, look, honey, you're an emoji. And that's that'll be that'll be really happy for her. <laughs> she's able to deflect away from anything that got me into trouble, which has not been very often. I've been pretty good. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so for everybody who has been watching this series for a long time, um, Jennifer, knock on wood, this is, I have a wood desk, um, Jennifer, it's, it's wood, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I have to prove that, you can hear it, Jennifer might be on the live stream tonight, uh, I'm gonna go meet with her, and our goal is to go to a beer garden, because after I finish an episode on the on main channel, I need to, to unwind, this one was hard, because I had to um, do, I had to do a lot of changes because I was working with Coach Prefecture a little bit and Toyota Rent a Car a little bit. Um, um, I I wanted it to be really perfect. You know, when whenever new anybody helps me, I want to make sure that I do I do the best that I can do, and I want them to feel it, and and I want them to want to support longer and again, right? So you want to do a good job for people that are backing backing you and they backed me a little bit on this episode um with free stuff so i was like i'm gonna really do the best that i can with this episode um the topic wasn't the best but um i'll find different ways to keep promoting 
um, because I love that area. Whenever you get invited to do this job, it's incredible, isn't it? It's, 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 I feel very lucky uh, just to be, to be doing this, you know, where I was 20, what, 10 years ago working you, um, um, on NHK, and I didn't have any say in the content I was creating with them. I didn't really have much influence on the script. They just invite me to go and do this topic. Now I have more creative control and I, I can't believe 10 years later I'm doing this and have maybe even more clout um, than NHK World for international programming. I bet you as many people are watching some of the stuff that I created as they're watching NHK, like the entire channel. So that to me, it's YouTube as a platform is just incredible. So I feel very, very lucky. So if you are thinking about getting into YouTube, do it. <laughs> just do it and try your best and learn along the way and don't be afraid to fall down. Um, uh, if you crack open a cheap Ikea table, you'll see the weird sort of cardboard mesh. Yeah, I've seen that. The ones that pull out, they're springy. Yeah, I Ikea is really good at innovating as well. Um, cool. All right, everybody, I might be, I'll, I'll try to give you at least a 30 or 45 minute no, uh, heads up if Jennifer and I do go live or do something tonight. Um, Jennifer and I, our schedules never really completely match. So if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Um, Peter's is, is a little bit easier to get in touch with. Jennifer's, uh, Jennifer's okay too, but she's gotten quite busy as, as of I. Um, it's mostly my fault. Um, Jennifer, can I just not get jealous of Jennifer? They've met and they're friends. Jennifer's been my friend for like a decade now. Yeah. So, uh, uh no, no problemo. Um, any moose industries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Remco. Yeah, PVG live stream. Um, he's, he has some really good ideas and he told me some of them. I'm not going to release that information, but they're really good. Peter, Peter's, a, I think he's, he's now getting into his, his, um, um, uh, rhythm now with what he wants to do. And it just took a year before he found out what he really wanted to do with, with his, with the platform. And I'm glad he found himself. Um, and he's <laughs> he found himself and he's, and he's now doing the moto vlogs. That's good. Um, so I'll do whatever I can to help to support my friends, including, uh, Kevin and Jennifer. Um, and I hope Jennifer stops doing live streams and starts editing, but it's hard for her to learn, uh, the editing because she's so busy. Um, thank you, iPhone queen. Vaughn, Peter found himself. I know when I said it, I, I started putting my mind. So Peter found himself. I think he might've found himself on YouTube, but he's still out there wandering. He's a wanderer. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a good have a good day. Good night. Um, if I do if I do have a midnight run or something, I might insert a picture of the washi paper lit up at night. I think this is going to be really cool. Or I'll just do an Instagram post, and you'll be able to see it uh, or something. And I'll, I'll put it on to put it put it on the Discord server. Oh, and if you do go to the Discord server, I I think some of the Discord people might not even know. There's a button up here with a pin on it. Do you see this pin? These are posts that I've pinned, and if you uh, click that, you'll be able to see... Oh, what? My pinned message isn't there anymore. Pinned message is specific to what uh, room you're in. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, this is complicated. So I go to the general chat. Oh, there it is. So I pinned, I pinned the Toby video. So you'll be able to see... Are you ready? Are you appealing? For You'll this? be able to see where okay. Toby He's came standing from. standing on his hind legs. I'm going for you. All right, here we go. That's all I'm going to show. But you can see this pinned in the Discord general chat server. In the general chat. It's, this is pretty cool. Thanks, thanks Katayama, for pointing that out. Um, yeah, leave any questions you might have in the comments below. Hit the like button if you're watching this and if you like these director's comments and uh, getting a chance to look back. I like it because it's a chance to reflect and put a nice little ribbon on something that took me a long time to make. Because these videos that I put on the main channel, I like to think are kind of special. And uh, I'm glad that uh, some, most of you, a few of you, some, most of you feel the same way. <laughs> it's us supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. Don't look back. Look forward. Have a good day. Good night. If you're on the West Coast, 